All right. Well, hello, everyone, and thanks for this opportunity to participate in today's colloquium. Obviously, I would have loved to join you in Rio, um, but I'm grateful for the opportunity to submit this video submission anyway. Um, today, I want to use my time to briefly share my research with you. Uh, I feel that it's highly relevant to the colloquium's objective of identifying uh, the legal mechanisms that we can use to advance the sustainable management of the Anthropocene. And so to do this, I want to very briefly introduce myself, my research, uh, and then I'll walk through the responses that I would provide to the three question prompts we were given. So first of all, uh, my name is Mike Angstead, and I was trained in international environmental law. Um, I practice law as an attorney, but currently I'm a PhD candidate studying environmental politics at Colorado State University. There, uh, my dissertation research focuses on green courts. These are the judicial institutions that solely hear environmental cases. Now, there's tremendous diversity in how green courts are structured and in the types of environmental cases that they're empowered to adjudicate, um, but across the board, we can say that these institutions are proliferating. A 2012 study of environmental courts and tribunals estimated the existence of over 500 of these institutions. Uh, and this uh, rapid spread has been observed both in the developed world and in the industrializing world, where we've seen institutions emerge like India's National Green Tribunal. Um, collectively, this phenomenon really points to a growing interest in bolstering institutional capacity to address environmental challenges. And so my research examines the spread of green courts by investigating two broad themes. First, why are we observing this sudden global proliferation in green courts? And secondly, what does it mean for environmental outcomes? Both of these overarching research questions closely relate to a key environmental challenge, and this is securing the necessary institutional capacity to effectively address environmental and related social challenges. And this is directly relevant to green courts um, because courts are increasingly adjudicating important environmental questions in various countries. And at the same time, uh, as developing countries face complex environmental challenges, green courts may help to provide the necessary expertise and capacity. Uh, my research looks at how we can help to make sure that this is the case. And so as part of this, uh, one key legal question that we need to explore is how well equipped are green courts to actually implement global environmental law norms. Uh, since these courts are being rapidly established around the world, we want to confirm that they actually address environmental questions more effectively than their generalist counterparts. And in order to examine this uh, and the potential role of green courts, I advocate interdisciplinary research uh, that incorporates the insights of three different disciplines. Specifically, I encourage us to look to international environmental law, uh, international relations, and especially global environmental governance scholarship, and finally, judicial politics literature. Um, and I encourage this interdisciplinary approach because existing legal scholarship has given us really valuable detailed accounts of individual green courts but political science studies uh, and international relations research is well suited to examining the broad questions of how norms spread across political systems. The synergy of these two approaches will help us to identify best practices in green courts and also identify the most effective mechanisms to disseminate those best practices to courts around the world. All right, so I'd love to tell you more about my research, um, but that's all the time that I have for in this presentation. Uh, thanks so much again for your attention uh, and also to the supporters of this research.